Piston Fanatic. I'm your host, Dave Dalton, and I'm excited to share my passion and perspective of our Detroit Pistons as we go on this fantastic voyage together. I've been a diehard Piston fan since the days of Dave Bing and Bob Lanier. I've also been the varsity basketball coach of a very successful program in northern Michigan. Well, Piston fans, I got up really, really early this morning and drove down. It's over four and a half hours for me by the time I stopped a couple times to go to Detroit to the Fisher Theater, and I got the pleasure of watching with my grandson, Ain't Too Proud to Bag, The Life and Times of the Temptations, and I love the Temptations, and it was a marvelous show, and I'm going to tell you, I ain't too proud to beg for a Piston win, because we need one after we lose tonight to 119 to 111 to the Utah Jazz, 25 losses in a row, we got we got to go to Brooklyn on Saturday, if we lose there, we tie the all-time record for most consecutive losses in history. And we got to play Brooklyn again at home. And then that would break the record if we lose, lose those two games. You know, I, I knew we were cursed when I looked at my Twitter feed. And you know, everybody in the world, in the NBA, and all the fans and all the players, follow Adrian Wojnarowski, Woj. And he tweeted out, I, I, I've never seen him tweet out anything like this, something to the effect of the Pistons... Better win tonight because Clarkson's not playing and Marketin and T Taylor Horton Tucker is not playing and they're playing the second night of a back-to-back -back, so we should be able to win. And I knew that, I, I already knew that the players were going to be putting a lot of pressure on themselves to win this game because everybody's been pointing at it and they just hear about this, they, they think about this 24 hours a day, this losing streak. And you think that these young kids, they just, you know, they just don't know how to handle it and they, you could just tell by the end of the game. They couldn't handle it. So there were lots of reasons we lost tonight. And we're going to try to get into all those reasons. Um, the one thing that happened towards the end of the game, all the bit, everybody in the crowd was chanting, sell the team, sell the team. I'm going to tell you, Tom Gores is not going to sell this team. This team is making money no matter how bad they are. They've been the worst team in the NBA for four years. And he paid $325 million dollars by the Detroit Pistons. They're worth now at least $3 billion, at least $3 billion. And every year, NBA teams are almost like going up in value by a third. So, you know, they're going to go up a billion dollars in value almost every year. So he's not selling this team, not yet, unless somebody gives him a ridiculous offer. But he's in California. He, he doesn't come to many games. And so I don't think he's you know, I, I, I'm sure he thinks about it and cares about it. I'm sure he follows the scores, but, uh, you know, and I, and I don't, you know, he, the thing that he did is he, he hired Monty. He, I think, overstepped Troy and hired Monty and begged him when he probably didn't want to coach the team and just got him to do it for an unreasonable amount of money. And so until Monty couldn't say no. So, you know, that's, other than that, he hasn't done much to, he doesn't tinker with the team, which is good. You don't want your owner trying to make trades or trying to um, do things like that or make the draft picks. You don't want them to meddle in the place because they don't know that much. A lot of owners like Jerry Jones for the Cowboys, you know, he's always got his fingers in the pot. So anyway, there, the reasons we lost this game were multiple reasons. And I'm going to tell you one of the reasons, you know, we count on, you know, Utah has some young players, but they had some veterans. They had guys that I have never heard of, and I follow the NBA, but there's guys I had never heard of that that lit us up tonight. So, um, but Bogdan Bogdanovich and Alec Burks are two veterans, are two shooters that were supposed to give us spacing, that were supposed to be our, leaned on and steady our players, our, our young team. They just didn't get it done tonight. So they, they combined Four for 16 from the floor overall, and two for 10 on threes. And we lose a close game. And I know Burks only played nine minutes, so it's hard to get in a rhythm playing nine minutes. And Bogey didn't touch the ball consistently. But still, they got to do it. They We have to depend on them to do something, and they didn't do it. So that, that was a big factor. Obviously, the 21 turnovers that led you know to a, a lot of points for Utah. So they got like 50 points off second chance points and points off turnovers. So that obviously just is, just kills you. And it, it, you know, it's just 27 points. Utah scored off our 21 turnovers and the jazz get, catch this. The jazz are playing without their, a bunch of their good players, but the jazz were the only team worse in the NBA at turnovers than the Pistons. 
and you know we out turned out we turned it over 21 times and they turned it over only 13 times so the other thing i was talking about is um monty obviously does not listen to my podcast because i have been begging since saying that we need to play um cade and ivy and bogey and we have to always have at least one of them on the court at all times and if not and as much as possible have two on the court and I'd like to see all three of them start and all three of them finish together and it can be done it can mathematically be done and Monty said after the game that you know somebody asked him about the all bench unit and he said about staggering and he's known this before and he's talked about it before and he said it's on me to figure it out well Monty it's how many games we we have lost 25 games in a row and it's on you to figure out you know it's not again I said this before we Monty needed time to figure out the roster and to figure out the team and he's had people in and out because of injuries and stuff but it's it's not an excuse now it's not an excuse for him him to figure it out and I will tell you um Cade played his guts out tonight. I my brother laughs at me for saying he played his guts out, but that's something we said as kids. So anyway, he he just he tried too hard at the end of the game. He forced his drive. So he's been not turning it over. His turnovers have gone way down. The last thirteen games he's averaging like three or less. And he's had a lot of really low turnover games. Our team has had games with less turnovers. We only had thirteen turnovers against Atlanta. We only had eight turnovers against the Milwaukee Bucks. So we've been doing better. And then tonight, when we have a chance to win a game, we turn it over 21 times and they get 27 points off them. But Kay would drive it, force the drive, trying to win the game for us. He took it to the basket and people collapsed on him and he didn't trust his teammates or let somebody pay. We had no movement. Ivy tried to do the same thing at the end, but Kate had the ball in his hands more. But Ivy did it a couple of times where he forced it in there and Ivy and Kate played great tonight. They played great overall. I mean, the turnovers were bad for both of them. And other than that, though, they, they shot really well, and they made a lot of good plays. Ivy was all over. Ivy was getting his hands on balls and deflecting balls and stealing and blocking shots. And, you know, he's a little bit spastic out there, but he was – you could just tell he's just trying as hard as he can, and you could tell that they're just sick. And they asked Kate about, you know, you know how, how does this team respond or how do you, this team feel? And – he says we're not we're not two and twenty six bad. He said no way are we that bad. So yes, I think we can play much better brand of basketball executing the game plan. But he took it upon himself. He said I made six turnovers and that killed us. He said I'm sick right now. He's sick right now. You could just see it on his face. If you got to watch the press conference, he had his hand on his head and he was just sick. He said I couldn't keep anybody in front of me. He said that's on me. And you know he's out there trying. He you know he's playing thirty nine minutes. And but he needs to play out there because we just our bench is too weak. We do not have enough good players. Okay, that's you know that's on um, Troy. We don't have a good players. We thought our bench was going to be a strength, and we don't have enough good players. And we go to our bench and we try, but we can't play all five of them at the same time. I mean that's obvious. So um, I'm just gonna. Stop talking about the Pistons for a second. I just want to talk about Ken Calvert and those Piston fans that were around for the bad boys. And Ken Calvert was the public address announcer for 16 marvelous years, especially those years even before the bad boys won a championship and even just after they won a championship. He was there and, you know, he passed away suddenly. So he he had an illness and he had a, a, a short-term illness, but he died suddenly and unexpectedly. So he was only 72 not that much older than me, and he's his wife of 40 years, Anne, talked about how much he just loved his fans and appreciated them. And he was, for four decades, he did radio, rock, rock and roll stations, different stations in the Detroit area. But really cool, he, he introduced Bob Seger to Bruce Springsteen. Can you imagine that? Um, but he, you know, we'll never forget Joe Do Mars. And Joe, I, you know, he commented after hearing about uh, Ken's passing away and said, you know, how that left a stamp on him and that people, you know, everybody in Detroit will always remember him for that call of Joe Dumars. And yeah, so anyway, you know, bless his family and pray for them. And, you know, I just, it's just a tough thing to lose somebody. But um, anybody, 
way Cade said nobody wants to be on the wrong side of history and he knows they need to what's in front of them and and I I'm going to tell you you can disagree with me and you have every right to disagree with me I say that all the time you know we all have opinions and I say that this team has talent not enough talent not enough depth but I think that teams uh, these other teams that were you know like the Sixers that went or whatever they were seven seven wins the whole season you know we're not as bad as those teams are and we just are playing bad and we just everything goes wrong again we are veterans that are really good players and have been great shooters didn't play good tonight so um, we'll go through the stats tonight but um, Bagley 31 minutes the marvelous Marvin he had 10 for 12 you know and a lot of Mar dunks but I'm gonna tell you this but he, people say yeah well yeah he got 10 for 12 and you got 22 points but all, he just dunked the ball well you got to make yourself available and it's a valuable asset for a team to have I mean if if Stu's down there, and Stu was amazing tonight. Stu was great. But Stu can't play that spot that Weissman and Bagley. Stu would not have, though, if Stu was in the same spots that Bagley was, he would not have those 10 for 12 shooting. He, he can't get the ball up inside, you know, around people like that. So, but anyway, he had 22 points, only four rebounds, which he has to do better than that. He usually gets four rebounds at least when he even plays 15 minutes. But bogey. So this is a killer, man. 35 minutes, 3 for 12, and five, 2 for 7 on threes. And he made a, and one of those threes was in the, late in the fourth quarter, and it was really deep. It was really a tough shot, but he just, he's not, he's, you know, he's had some really great games, including last game against Atlanta. He had 25 and shot really efficiently, but we need him. And so, you know, we were hoping when we got him back, he still makes a difference for spacing, but we, we have to maybe look for him more and maybe run some more plays for him, but he only had eight points, but he had, not only that, he had one rebound and zero assists in 35 minutes. So, I, you know, I think, I'm sure that Monty's probably going to try to find some ways to get him the ball more, but like I said, Stu was stupendous. He was 32 points, three for four, one for one on free throws, and um, I mean, one for one on threes, no for one on free throws. And, but so, again, we need scoring, and but he can play if we have Bagley that scores and Bogey that scores and K that scores and Ivy that scores. Then then Stu or Ivy can be out there, so you know it, it doesn't kill you as bad. But he you know he's supposed to have been the the floor spacer, but but he he's only been scoring like seven points a game or less. But he was plus twelve. He had the highest plus twelve on the team. He blocked a shot first play of the game. Uh, Cade, 39 minutes, 10 for 22. He forced up some shots at the end, you know, kind of desperation shots. So his percentage dipped at the end, and he was 2 for 6 on threes. 6 for 7 on free throws, 7 rebounds, 10 assists. He, he passed the ball really well. He didn't even try to score the first quarter. He made lots of good passes, 2 steals and a block shot. But, again, the 6 turnovers are going to haunt our team and haunt him. Um, 24 points. So, um he made some great plays. He made some tough shots. He was real. He was really efficient until, like I said, until the very end. Ivy was all over the court tonight. He was, he was all over the court. He was just like a, um, I don't know what he was like. He was just a bohemian rhapsody. He was amazing. He was everywhere. He um, had played 35 minutes, eight for 14, two for four on threes, one for one on free throws, and four, he had four rebounds, seven assists. Three steals, two blocks, but four turnovers was not good. 19 points, but hopefully Monty lets him keep playing. And Killian should be back. Killian was sick. Uh, I think I'd let, let you know that Duran has started light practice, not really practicing, just doing light workouts. So he's going to slowly ramp up, I'm sure. And and then that will make a huge difference for us. And I still think any any close game, if we would have Duran, it would make a difference. Um but Weisman played 15 minutes only, one for two. He's been playing so well lately. Five rebounds in 15 minutes is really good. I thought he blocked more than one shot, but um, Livers, 13 minutes, 0 for 3, 0 for 3 on threes. And so that is just, you know, there's just not, and he got blown by any fouls. And, you know, he's just, he wants to do good. He We th thought he was good, but he just hasn't done good. So, you know, you just don't play. You give... Asar his minutes and you stagger other people 
You know, you don't you don't have to play him 13 minutes. You can give 13 more minutes to Sar and see what he can do because he makes things happen, man. He hit one tough fadeaway jumper with the shot clock running down. He can just elevate and fade away. He was three for three, three for three, and one for two on free throws, unfortunately. Um, Burks, nine minutes, one for four, and over three. And he's again, he's had way too many games just like this. He he got lucky that they followed him at the end of the shot. At, the quarter, I think, and he got to shoot three, three free throws, so he, he made them all, that, so that was his three points. But he doesn't get you know rebounds or assists. Sasser, he, I want him to play more. He played 13 minutes, just let him play, you know. And But here's the problem that happens. So whenever our bench unit was all in there, what does Utah do? And other teams have done this. They go to a zone, and we just don't, you know, those guys aren't good enough offensive players to score against the zone. And, Teams don't practice against zones that much. You don't see some, so you don't have the, the scheme. And so all of a sudden that's thrown at these guys. And a lot of them, I mean, they all had terrible, the, our benches plus minus was, our, our starters had all plus, plus minus, and our bench had minus 7, minus 18, minus 16, minus 9, minus 13. That was our bench, their plus minus. So Monty's got to figure it out. He said he's going to. So we um, we shot 50%. And they shot only 46%, and we lost. But again, it's the turnovers and second chance points that killed us. Uh, and we shot 29% on threes, and we just got to get shooters. We, Monty, or Troy's got to get some shooters. That's top, top priority. They were 11 for 30. They were 37% on threes. And it just, um, free throws, they shot, it, they were um, 22 for 24, and we were 16 for 19. So that's tough. They had some guys come out of nowhere. I didn't know where this Simone guy, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. It starts with an F, but he was 6 for 12 and 4 for 7 on threes and had 16 points. Our guy, Kelly Olenek, that played in Detroit. You know, I always said, I said this repeatedly, that Kelly was way better than what he played in Detroit. His percentages were never good. But Kelly played a little bit, was got hurt, played a little bit, got COVID, played a little bit, got hurt. So his percentage was bad in Detroit. His percentage last year in Utah was quite good. And, you know, tonight he was 3 for 6, but they... They, they got a rebound late in the game. They had a lead, and I think there was under two minutes to go or about two minutes to go, and they kick it out to Kelly. And instead of running clock, which every I think every coach, I think his coach would have wanted him to, he launches a three and he makes it, and that was kind of the dagger, though. But he had 27 points, Kelly Olenek, and and they had this other guy, I, I Jabi, and he, man, he was a freak of nature. He could just fly. He had it was seven for 12 and 18 points. My guy Taylor Hendricks, that I liked to draft, I wanted the Pistons to draft him um, ahead of Asar. I wanted Ken Whitmore, then I wanted Taylor Hendricks, even though he might not be great, but he's played in the G League some, but he was three for five and one for two on threes and played only 16 minutes or something and had seven points. So he looked pretty good. Chris Dunn tore us up. But yeah, it was a tough loss. And I, I know that the team is just devastated. I'm devastated. You're devastated. And but all we could do is come back and play. And I hope you come back and listen to my podcast. I forgot to ask you to subscribe, but if you're still listening, you probably shut me off by now. But I just want you to think about the commercial. There's one of the best commercials ever made was there's these three elderly ladies that were childhood friends and they're at this park and one of them brings out this box from Amazon and it's this uh, pad to put on your seat and these three elderly ladies go down this hill at a park in the city and they slide down this hill together and they show flashbacks of them when they were kids and it was by this there's a song that I just love by the Beatles in my life and there are places I remember and anyway it's a great song and a great commercial but thank you for listening be the reason that somebody feels cared for and go Pistons.